During this pandemic, there has been no shortage of misinformation about COVID-19, treatments that might help, and all of that. And so we want to make sure that here at The Damage Report, you get accurate information. And so joining us now to break down uh, some of the current response to the pandemic and uh, where we go from here is Professor of Medicine at New York Medical College and Chairman of Medicine at St. Joseph University Hospital, Dr. Bob Lahito. Welcome to The Damage Report. Thanks. De delighted to be with you. Very glad to have you here. Um, there's a few different uh, topics that we want to touch on, um, but the, the first I wanted to bring up was something that gets talked about quite a bit, which is testing. Um, yeah. the, the president often points out that we're doing more testing right now, um, but I wanted to go a little bit beyond just the surface and talk about, um, in your evaluation, have the tests become more accurate? And if you could break down the difference between traditional tests and antibody tests, we, we sure. would love that as well. Yeah, well, the test that is definitive for this virus is something called a PCR test. And if you Google it, it says polymerase chain reaction. And what that does is it takes the virus, which has a single strand of RNA in it, and it takes the RNA and makes other nucleic acids like DNA and then messenger RNA, if everybody remembers their high school biology, mm. and you get a very specific assay, which is extremely sensitive and very, very specific for the coronavirus. Now that's important because there are many, many coronavirus species, many of which cause the common cold. So it was important to get COVID-19 pretty specific. That was the test that started back in February and which was very difficult to get results from. So we would send it to the state labs. It would take sometimes seven, sometimes 12, 14 days to get the results back. Now that has been streamlined and every hospital, every large hospital and even some medium sized hospitals have the COVID-19 PCR test on site. And we can do that test and pretty much tell you whether you are actively infected or just have fragments of the virus left over from a previous infection. That's the test that people are lining up for in parking lots and stuff where the swab goes into your nose, into the nasopharynx, and then you get the actual virus out, which is then put in a container, uh, I call it a module, and that module then does the PCR test quickly. We can run 24 tests an hour in the hospital with the PCR machines doing this very, very sophisticated and very sensitive test. That's not the antibody test. Mm -hmm. The antibody test is measuring a protein which is made by plasma cells in your blood against the virus. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, we hope, we don't know, neutralizing to the virus, which means your, your adaptive immune system makes these antibodies in recognition to a specific virus, in this case, the COVID virus, and it really looks at the little, I guess there's spikes on the surface of the virus itself, and it makes antibody to those spikes, which are protein. And that's specific for somebody who's been infected, but not who's currently infected. So by that, I mean the only test for that virus right now, antibody-wise, is the IgG, which connotes a long ago infection. Long ago could be two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the immune system, that's long ago. Now, we have an IgM and an IgA test that's available commercially in some places, but they're not really FDA up to speed approved yet. Uh, although I'm sending my patients' bloods away, so they get the IgA and the IgM test. The IgM test means that you've been recently infected. So I hope that sort of sums it up. So let me give you the summary of this. So the PCR test is testing for the actual presence of the virus. The antibody test, which we hope is neutralizing, meaning it gets rid of the virus immunologically, is available only in the IgG uh, isotype mm -hmm. right now through commercial labs, hospital labs, et cetera. So uh, you referenced there at the end the, the possibility that uh, many regular people, laymen, believe that if the antibody test shows that you had previously been infected, that you are now immune to coronavirus. Do we have any reason to believe that that is actually true? Well, for most viruses, that is the case. Measles, mumps, um, you know, influenza. But remember that this is one of many coronaviruses. And you know that you can get influenza every year. So that's the concern. 
that if you have a neutralizing antibody, how long does it last? Does it last a month, two months, six months? We don't know. The new vaccine is also going to be concerned with that because we are banking on the fact that when we give you the remnants of the virus or the attenuated or weakened virus as a vaccine, that your immune system is going to make antibody to it, and it's going to be protective. Mm -hmm. However, you and I know, and I think your viewers know, that the common cold, which is a coronavirus, can occur over and over again. You can get a cold in March and then have another cold in June, and uh, that's a corona. So that's our concern. <laughs> our mm -hmm. concern would be if this virus keeps on giving itself to us. Yeah. And we simply don't know at this point. That's yeah. the whole business of developing a vaccine, by the way. The vaccine has got to show that there's protection from this virus. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I certainly understand the, the fear that you could have been infected, um, a period of time could go by and you could become reinfected. We don't know for sure. Um, right. There had been, I remember several months ago, there were some doctors who were saying that there might be reason to believe that there could be sort of spontaneous reemergence of coronavirus, that a person who had previously had it does not appear to have been reinfected externally, but that it had simply reemerged. Is there any reason to believe that, or was that sort of a, a false false lead, well, I guess? That, that's not false, but it the reemergence occurs within days. We have patients we've seen in the hospital who are discharged who go home after having been in the intensive care unit for a week, and then all of a sudden they come back in the emergency room short of breath and the virus is back. So it's a short period of time. It's not two months or six months where the virus comes back. This virus likes to replicate within the cells of your lung, et cetera, and it may take a bit for the viral load to increase. Once it's been tamped down, we simply don't know whether it comes back, say, after mm. six months or a year. I don't think so. I doubt that. Immunologically speaking, the immune system is sophisticated enough to protect you right off the bat. Uh, however, the virus, when it's first infecting you, can reinfect or become worse, I suppose. The viral load increases within two or three days, and then you can be dreadfully ill again. Mm. Then we also have patients that we see in the hospital who get the covid do very, very well at home, and then all of a sudden, five days after the initial infection, they get very, very sick, wind up in the emergency room, wind up on a ventilator for, say, five or six days, and then get better. So that's what I think the doctors were meaning. I don't think they meant that this is like five months later you get the virus. Okay. Yeah. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.